Well, Steph, uh, thank you very much for joining me here at CHQ. Obviously, what do you think of the uh, new facility unveiling today? Yeah, it's absolutely incredible. Um, we've been in it for a couple of weeks now and just been able to um, experience it and sort of feel like we're at home every day and come to work and all of our um, tools of the trade already here, our boots and our uniform and stuff, and just to you know, get out there and focus on the football is, is amazing. So what is the first thing I want to ask is how does it sort of compare to, you know, you played at the rival club Melbourne Victory, just come back from the US, you've also played for Portland, mm -hmm. just come back from Orlando, I mean, how does it all compare from what you've seen so far? Um, well, I think in America uh, it's a fully professional league, so most of the clubs you'll go to you'll find will have pretty good facilities, um, definitely a change room like a hub and a base that the players can go to and I've had that definitely at Portland and definitely at Orlando. Can't really speak for the other clubs but it, being a fully professional league you kind of expect that and that's where we want to get with the W League and that's what we're, we've started with here um, and we can feel professional at this club which is incredible. When you started off as a professional female football I mean it would have been so with all like I'll say this respectfully it would be so hard to envisage all of this happening is that a fair assessment? Uh, like, if you wind the clocks back, maybe like four years, five years? Definitely, yeah. Um, when I was coming through, I started in the W League when I was 15. Um, I thought that what we had was good. Yeah. And um, it's a mindset that I hope the 15 year olds coming through yeah. don't have um, if I was to tell them what we had back then. Um, you know, we, we never had access to showers, and it was usually just a, um, you know, one of those brick built. Uh, public change rooms kind of thing that we were renting out for the season almost so um, it never felt like we had a home um, until now really there's somewhere to come to every single day that's ours and um, that we can build and continue to learn as footballers together. Well, there's a lot of talk about sort of your, your competitors not just young clubs but also other sports I mean there's a lot of talk last season how you raised the benchmark with what you did on the field I mean how much like it's a good thing that People are going to look at this from other clubs, other sports, and say, hey, look at Melbourne City, we should be doing this, sort of raise our standard, actually give some attention to the women's game as well. Definitely, yeah. I think um, other sports have really amped it up, in, especially this last year. Um, and I think it's only a good thing for women's sport. I'm a big advocate for whatever women's sport's doing, no matter what sport it is. Yeah. Um, but I think football has to keep up. I think we can't fall behind in um, all the professionalism that's going on. and. Um, I'm very grateful for what City are doing because they really are raising the benchmark and pushing other clubs and football in general to, to pick up the standard and to make sure we're, we're keeping up. Can I ask about the squad on the pitch now? I mean, how do you sort of see uh, the, the squad collectively? You've got a couple of talented players. You've lost some players. You've lost Beatty, Little, um, Chidiak, who's on a, over at Adelaide now. You've got Goad, who's, uh, training, who's playing in the US, US for, yeah. for a college club. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you sort of see with the players that you've brought in? You've got Fishlock back, you've brought Barnes in. Yeah. She's brought Barnes with her from Seattle. <laughs> um, so how do, you, how do you sort of see it? Looking from the first two games, it doesn't look, as, it doesn't look like it will be as easy as it was last season. Mm. Definitely. I think it, it's a brand new season. As you said, it's a brand new squad. Good players gone out, good players come in. Um, but we're not really looking to compare to last season. We're just trying to improve as a football side. And we have started a little bit slow, but I feel like we're getting better and better every single training session. It's taken us a little while to gel. Um, and I think in the next coming rounds, we're just going to keep getting better and better and building and um, hopefully playing good football. And the fact that we haven't been playing our best and haven't started as strongly as we probably hoped and we're still winning is, for me, a massive positive. Is that... Um, we're experienced enough and professional enough to still get the job done, even when we're not playing our best football. So hopefully it's better from here and um, can keep get, getting some wins. There is actually a game this weekend. <laughs> it's against, it's the, the, the big derby on Sunday against mm -hmm. Melbourne Victory. I mean, uh, still a weird feeling coming up against your former club or not really? Um, I don't know. I guess I'll have to wait and see yeah. um, come game day because uh, I haven't played against yeah. them in a little while since last season. Um, I think I missed one of the games because we were away. But uh, I know I, remember, I know last year it was definitely still a strange feeling. Um, but they've got a whole new squad, and it's not the girls that I really played alongside by one or two. Um, and I've been here for this is my second year now, so this is my home. And um, yeah, I'll put on my shirt and play against them, and it'll be what it is. It'll be football. Did you? 
it's like it's unusual. Did you cop it from Victory supporters when you moved over, like social media and at, get, uh, at games and stuff like that? Is that a thing or? Um, a little bit. I, I mean, a lot of it was quite positive. I think okay. a, a lot of the girls had um, already signed over, so I feel like a lot of people kind of predicted yeah. what was going to happen, which probably helped because it was more drawn out. But there was quite a bit of negative media okay. that I had expected. Um, being the captain and being there since I was fifteen. Um, it was definitely a little bit of backlash, but uh, definitely not as much as I had anticipated. I was really quite anxious about the announcement, but um, people were really supportive and could see that City was a great club and um, was going to be doing great things. So um, the support was just as good. In a way, is that sort of, is the sort of the backlash kind of a good thing though? Like it shows that people actually care, and you know, <laughs> there's you know, we've got sort of you know traders and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I I think I started to look at it that way when yeah. it came through. It was that they were more upset than angry, which was a nice a nice thing in the end. You you also got you also copped it from in from Portland supporters in that first game. Did you? Is <laughs> no, that true? no, you didn't. I didn't. They the Portland supporters are incredible. They're yeah. very very passionate, but very loyal to people who play mm. for them. I think I, I mean Alex Morgan came over with me and I think she copped a lot more than oh, I did yeah. just being yeah. an American probably um, but I found that after the game the supporters all wanted to say hi still and yeah. um, were treating me still like their own um, as if I was just kind of gone on a holiday or something but they were yeah they were great I didn't feel any negative negativity from them at all yeah. you just finished off the season for Orlando the inaugural season with our former Matilda coach Tom Simani I mean you played 11 games probably in terms of the table Finishing what probably you know not not ideal. Uh, how did you sort of see the whole experience anyway in the end? Yeah, it was um, it was interesting with the Olympics in the middle and then obviously coming back from the Olympics injured. Um, but the first half of the season, I played uh, all eleven games, all ninety minutes, um, and absolutely loved it. I think I was probably playing some of my best football that I've played over there. Um, I love playing uh, underneath Tommy. He's um, he really allows you to be yourself on the field and loves when you express yourself in an attacking manner and kind of makes sure that you bring all of your attributes to the game and gives you a lot of confidence to do that. Um, uh, he's got a brilliant football mind. I still felt like I was learning from him every day, which is which is great. Um, and yeah, as you said, uh, obviously it was an interesting experience not making. Uh, the finals in the end and I came back from the Olympics and I knew that I wasn't going to play for the rest of the season so that was a challenge in itself um, but it's the first year for the club and the NWSL is an extremely tough league with incredible players so you can't just come in and um, not play all that well and expect to win every game. Remember when we spoke, I don't know if you remember, when we spoke at the phone on May, uh, you were over there yeah, in the US, in, you yeah. spoke about how what the US offered, the way they go about doing things, it really you thought it was going to really help you grow as a player in terms of how they develop their young girls through college, etc. I mean, how, like now that like that's that's all the way back in May. How do you feel now about that growing as a player? Uh, still think the same thing. I think America uh, every single year grows in itself in that league, and um, every time I go back, I'm challenged in a different way. Um, I think as the the older I get, the more pressure is on me to not be a youngin over there and perform and be a leader and um, that was something I found this year that um, I thrived in, I really enjoyed and obviously um, it felt good to go to a professional league like that where my first year or so I was by far the youngest and just, you know, in my little shell kind of just playing. <laughs> um, to see that I'd grown into being able to be that person over there in, in the American League was was cool. How are the, how are the fans over there? I mean... Like, I always see stuff. There's all fan pages of Steph Catley, you know, fans <laughs> love getting photos with you. I mean, how does that feel like? How does that feel over there in the US, just being an Aussie and also the amount of attention you get as well? I mean, it must be pretty overwhelming, mm. I suppose. They love it over there. The, the fans and the support is incredible. It's like nothing else. They pick a team, they pick players, and they just love them with everything that they have. And it can be overwhelming, but it's, it's amazing. You walk into the stadium and there's people waiting there just to welcome you and then when you leave they're there for signatures and um, public appearances they turn up everywhere and it's just they're always so lovely and so um, appreciative of your time and uh, it's unbelievable really. Yeah, um, yeah would it be good to uh, get a sort of partnership going between the W League and the NWSL considering how many players sort of go through our off season over there and then vice versa? 
Yeah, I don't know exactly how it would work. I guess they have that with Canada and Mexico, but um, I mean, we have enough players going over there um, and a fair few that come over here now. I think there's like six or seven Chicago players in yeah. the league. So from Played one team. Adelaide, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's pretty cool. I don't know if a partnership would be necessary or if it would work, but um, I know players love going there and we love yeah. coming there. Um, obviously, your season was cut short after that injury you picked up against Brazil. You went off after about 20 minutes, I think. Um, sort of, probably, you're feeling all good at the moment. The left foot's fine. Uh, right home is all good. <laughs> yeah, um, I've been through a rigorous rehab um, sort of period, and yeah. I'm back now training fully and um, still getting back into it. I missed a lot of time and... Um, ended up using it to take some time off as well, so yeah. step away from the game for a little while. Um, probably it was the first break I had since I started with the national team, which okay. was probably the reason for half of my yeah. injuries. Um, but I'm feeling a lot better now and still slowly, step by step, getting back into it and finding form and um, technique and uh, base fitness and stuff. It, it all takes so long to get back, but I'm slowly getting there and um, hopefully I'll stay injury free for a little while now. Did you go into that tournament with a hurt foot already? Or? Yeah, so I um, came into camp. We went into camp about a month before yeah. in Brazil. And within like half a week of being there, the, I found out I had a stress fracture. So okay. we just had to deal with it from there, basically. And I was on mod modified training up until the tournament, basically just in a pool, keeping fit. Um, and then, yeah, got through the games and... Obviously, a month not fully training, that's probably why the hamstring ended up going. And um, We always knew it was a risk, but um, it's the Olympics, and you've got to do what you've got to do. Publicly, just wanted to keep that a bit hush-hush in terms of media finding out and that all that sort of stuff. Or? During the tournament? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah obviously, because if, if any team knew I had yeah, a stress fracture, they my foot. For you. Yeah. yeah. Was it disappointing at all, coming away with just one win from four games, or...? Yeah, definitely. I think um, we went into the tournament feeling really good about our chances and um, feeling very positive. Uh, but we were still taking it one game at a time and, you know, major tournaments, you never know what's coming. You can go in, um, you know, in the best form of your lives and something happens and um, a game changes in a certain way and everything's kind of thrown up in the air and you have to learn to deal with it. It's so, um, survival of the fittest, really. Um, so I think we were quite disappointed in the end. Um, but in saying that, we're such a young team and from tournaments like this, we learn so much and we take so much away from, from the negative experiences and I think um, with the year off now to build and to um, get more prepared and more experienced and more fit and strong and come back and hopefully by the time we're in France for the World Cup, we'll all be kind of peak age and uh, ready to go for that tournament. Just the fact that you went for a medal, man. Is that the most disappointing part? Did it feel like you sort of came, or it was sort of a failure in the end, or is that just... Well, I think you go, everyone goes into a major tournament going for a medal. I don't think anyone would go in thinking, let's go and try and win one game and that'll be it. Yeah. Um, so the same as any team that goes out in, at any place, we felt disappointed and um, we wanted to obviously go further, but that's not how it worked out. And if a, if a few small things went um, a different way, it could have been... Could have been a different result, but it wasn't, and we um, take what we can from it and move on. Steph, are you the face of the Matildas? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't know if there is a face. Yeah. I think the face is uh, our brand of football, and um, everyone brings something unique and different to the team, and uh, yeah. I, don't, I definitely don't think that's me. <laughs> Sorry if I put you on the spot there. <laughs> that's all right. but, uh, it's fair to say a lot of people would think that from a marketing perspective, it would be good to sort of have someone like you promoting the game. Hmm. Well, I guess I, d I do. I do <laughs> do my best to promote it in any way I can, and so do the other girls. I think, you know, Kai does a lot of work, and um, Alana, Caitlin, Sam, there's so many people you could say that about that are just incredible ambassadors for the game, and everyone does their bit, and um, yeah. Do you aspire to captain the team eventually, or...? Um, it's not on my short term yeah. goals. Uh, I'm just working on being the best footballer I can at the moment and um, learning to be a leader here and learning from people like Jess, um, people in the national team like Polks uh, that I can sort of aspire to. And I'm still learning every day about leadership. 
Um, so it's not something on my short-term goals. Um, yeah, if it comes up in the future, I'll definitely, um, definitely be ready to have a go. But uh, for now, it's just about football and learning and trying to be the best player I can be. How's it been being the captain of Melbourne City anyway? Just two um, games or go by as well? Yep. But this point by, but yeah, it's been great. It? It's been great so far. Um, as I said about Jess, it's so nice having her here at the club and um, being able to learn from her every day and have her support. Um, you know, she does so much around the club, on the field, and um, it just makes my life a whole lot easier, especially coming in uh, as a, to my first year of captaincy. Having her behind me and supporting me is, is amazing. You must be looking back at sort of everything over the, like, the last past few years and just thinking how, what, how good is the progression for yourself individually as a footballer, as a person, you know, the following you get, the players that sort of look up to you, I mean, it must be pretty, you know, like, just overwhelming there. Yeah, I guess so. I There's a lot of stuff that I'm pretty, like, blinkers with yeah. sometimes. Like, I don't actually know the effect I have on people sometimes yeah. until I meet them and they might tell me and I'm like, yeah. wow, that's yeah. incredible. Um, but it is hard to know sometimes. Um, but, I mean, with my football, I, I'm... I just want to keep getting better every year. Um, and obviously with the injury and the setback and stuff, I've been so focused on just getting back to where I was and everything like that. But um, I had big goals and big aspirations, so hopefully I can keep getting better. You came from humble beginnings in you, though. Like, just considering what you've sort of spoken about in the past, getting to training, like, like just, like, looking where you are now. I mean, you have to just remind yourself about how sort of privileged you are to be in this position. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, I I actually have this little book that um, I write down things like that, that like memories of um, things that I don't want to take for granted and things that were hard and um, even things that I've accomplished and stuff, just so I can always look back on it and remember, um, you know, the work that I've done. So it's not just like, oh, I'm here yeah. now. I, just, I can't remember how I got here. There's actually been hours and hours and years and years of work put into it and um, sacrifice. So... It's nice to look back on that stuff sometimes. I'll ask you one thing. Um, do you, what do you, what's the deal with you and cats? Like, what? are you misfit of them? Or, <laughs> I was watching this thing on Santa Sam and Ed's. Oh, God. It's just good. doing a bit That's of research and now I found So, it. it's not actually all cats. It's, it got a little bit out of hand. <laughs> they didn't bit, really let me explain it. bit blown it out of proportion. But, I, um, I have a really close friend, Ashley Brown. She used to play yeah. football. Um, and... Her cats, their family have them, but they don't. They don't really pay a whole lot of attention to yeah. them and stuff. So I always used to go over, and I'm allergic to them. So I'd like pat them with a yeah, texter. So am I, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd pat them with a texter and kind of give them a little bit of attention. And then I guess they like fell in love with me or something because one we day, get away. Yeah, yeah, I could like make them go anywhere in the house, <laughs> and I'd, I'd be like, apparently they. If they're out sunbathing, yeah. you couldn't get them to move. Ashley's oh, like, they're okay. not going to come with you. And then, I got them to walk to the bathroom, and Ashley's like, they've never been there before. Whoa. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> cat whisperer. All right, yeah. But that's the story. Like, it's so very minor. Yeah. I mean, I'm allergic to them, so I generally stay. I'm much more of a dog person. Yeah. But Obviously, I, can, yeah. I can whisper to Ashley Brown's cats. That's the story.